For over a decade, the iPhone has been the undisputed king of the smartphone market. But now, as we approach the release of the iPhone 16, something feels different. The excitement that once surrounded each new iPhone seems to be fading. While it's still a dominant player in the market, signs of trouble are starting to show in its foundation. One of the most noticeable changes in recent years is people are now keeping their iPhones for much longer before deciding to upgrade. This is a big shift from how things used to be, where getting the latest model every year was more common. According to data from Statista, in the second quarter of 2024, Apple shipped over 45 million iPhones. This was a decrease of nearly 5 million units compared to the previous quarter. On top of that, iPhone revenue saw a 10% drop from the same time last year, bringing in $45.96 billion. This dip is part of a bigger trend that's raising questions about what's next for the iconic device. But why is this happening? Back in 2015, people were replacing their iPhones roughly every two years. But by 2023, according to CounterPoint Research, this had extended to four years. This is great news for consumers, but it also means their devices are lasting longer, reducing the need to upgrade, which obviously means a major fall in sales. Additionally, the pace of innovation has slowed. Remember the jump from the iPhone 3G to the iPhone 4? It felt huge. Introducing the Retina display in the App Store completely changed the game. But these days, new iPhones don't seem to bring that same level of excitement. Sure, there are improvements, better cameras, faster processors, but they're mostly incremental. Take the iPhone 15, for example. One of the biggest changes was the switch to a USB-C charger, which wasn't even Apple's choice. It was a result of pressure from the European Union. For many consumers, these minor upgrades aren't enough to justify buying a new phone every year. And now the same has happened with the iPhone 16. No major innovation, no new things to excite consumers to switch. Just a change in camera design and processor. And that was it. Meanwhile, Apple's main competitor, Samsung, has taken a bold, different route. While Apple has been fine-tuning its existing features, Samsung has been exploring new technologies and designs. Take their camera tech as an example. While Apple has made small upgrades over time, Samsung has been breaking new ground with impressive features like a 200-megapixel main camera and advanced zoom. These innovations may not always result in better photos, but they create a sense of progress and excitement that Apple's more measured approach lacks. Samsung has also been at the forefront of the foldable phone revolution. The company launched its first foldable device, the Galaxy Fold, in 2019. Since then, it has refined the technology, addressing early issues and expanding its lineup to include both fold-out tablets and flip phones. While the market for foldable devices remains relatively small, Samsung's willingness to experiment with new form factors stands in stark contrast to Apple's more conservative approach. In the domain of artificial intelligence, Samsung has again taken a more aggressive stance. The company has incorporated AI features into its devices, particularly in areas like language processing and photography. While Apple has made strides with on-device AI, its privacy-focused approach has resulted in fewer visible AI features for users. This is not to say that Samsung's approach is objectively better than Apple's. The iPhone still maintains advantages in areas like chip performance and ecosystem integration. Another major issue Apple is facing is its performance in the Chinese market. For years, China accounted for about 20% of all iPhone sales. But in early 2024, sales in China dropped by 40%, even after Apple lowered prices by offering discounts up to $180. This sharp decline raises some big questions about Apple's future in one of its most important markets. Several factors are at play here. A growing sense of economic nationalism in China, driven by the ongoing trade tensions with the US, has led many Chinese consumers to favor domestic brands over foreign ones. For some Chinese consumers, buying an iPhone no longer feels like the must-have experience it once did, and this leads to Huawei, which had previously faced challenges due to US trade restrictions, experienced a remarkable resurgence. The company's sales surged by nearly 70% compared to the same period in the previous year, and this growth was not isolated to Huawei alone. Vivo and Honor also made significant growth in the market. For the first time in several years, both these companies managed to surpass Apple in sales volume within China. This presents a tough challenge for Apple, especially considering how much the company has invested in China. Over the past decade, Apple has invested about $275 billion into the country, both in terms of manufacturing and local investment. But as trade tensions rise, that investment is looking riskier by the day. In some cases, Apple's close ties with the Chinese market have even led to accusations that the company has bent to political pressure, such as when it removed apps used by Hong Kong protesters during the 2019 demonstrations. Such actions have raised questions about Apple's commitment to its stated values and its ability to navigate complex geopolitical situations. 
While grappling with challenges in China, Apple faces a different set of pressures in its home market. In 2024, the United States Department of Justice (DOJ) initiated a formal investigation into Apple's business practices, focusing particularly on its App Store policies. Regulators have accused the company of engaging in monopolistic behavior, especially in its management of applications and restrictions on third-party services. One of the main points of contention is Apple's so-called walled garden a term used to describe the way Apple tightly controls which apps can be downloaded and how they function on the iPhone. The App Store is incredibly profitable for Apple, but many developers and competitors argue that it's unfair. Apple takes a cut of every sale made through the App Store and has strict rules about what apps can and can't do. While it's unlikely that this investigation will result in any immediate changes to how Apple operates, it could have long-term consequences. If regulators decide that Apple's practices are anti-competitive, it could open the door for more competition and force Apple to loosen its grip on the iPhone ecosystem. But the tension for Apple didn't stop here. Another challenge is emerging from within Apple's own product lineup. The rumored iPhone SE 4, expected to launch at a more affordable price point, could pose a significant threat to the flagship iPhones. The SE 4 is anticipated to come packed with many of the same features as the iPhone 16. Face ID, a modern design, and even some of Apple's AI-powered tools, all for a price around $500. In an era where consumers are feeling the pinch of rising living costs, the appeal of a cheaper iPhone is clear. If the SE4 delivers a high-end experience at a fraction of the price, it could lure customers away from the more expensive models. Why spend $1,000 on an iPhone 16 when you can get most of the same features for half the price, is the question many consumers are asking themselves. Of course, this creates an interesting dilemma for Apple. While introducing a more affordable option could expand the company's market reach, it also risks diminishing sales of its premium models, which typically yield higher profit margins. The future of the iPhone is without a doubt uncertain. As Apple prepares to release its latest model, it's facing challenges from all sides. Stagnating innovation, regulatory pressures, changing consumer habits, and increasing competition. The iPhone's dominance isn't over, but it's no longer as unshakable as it once was. 